Welcome back. In the last video, you took a speed test. Since then, if you follow directions, you even took multiple tests for a comprehensive view. I see you, good rule followers. In this second of a two-part episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll show you some steps you can take once you have speed test results. Next. Looking over the speed test results, you may first notice lower numbers than were advertised for your service plan. The speeds listed by an internet service provider, ISP, are considered the highest possible speeds under ideal conditions. Factors like the quality, congestion, interference, limitations, protocols, or distance you live from the ISP infrastructure can all affect the speed. When you perform a speed test, it measures the maximum speed at which your device can download and upload data to and from a server. However, with so many variables, these tests may not always reflect your actual day-to-day -day browsing speeds. If your internet is suddenly slow, you may wanna contact your ISP to see if their service is down or performing maintenance. Another simple solution might be to just perform a reboot of your router and modem to see if that clears up the issue. If it's a pretty consistent problem, there could be several factors causing the network to be slow. It may seem obvious, but the problem may be that you have more devices using the network than your internet plan can handle. If your business has grown and you've added devices and employees, you can simply contact your ISP for a plan with higher capabilities. How much speed do you need? There's no easy answer to that. In the most general of terms, video calls and video streaming often take up a lot of bandwidth. 100 to 200 megabits per second is considered plenty fast for one user. But when that is split between several employees, it can be really complicated to figure out. Your ISP should be able to help. If it's your customers using all your bandwidth, you could set up a guest network and limit it on that VLAN. Another option would be to set up quality of service settings or bandwidth shaping to make sure priority is given to voice and video. If these alternatives won't work for you or you are already at the highest plan offered, it's time to look at the equipment in your network. Make sure all hardware, including your router, switches, and access points are up to date with the latest security and features available. Schedule updates and backups for times when you're not using your network heavily. If any critical device is outdated, consider purchasing an updated one. Cisco Business offers many updated options that are simple and easy to set up. Make sure that the equipment the ISP has provided is up to date. If not, they should replace them for you. It could even be that your outdated computer, laptop, smartphone, or smart TV may not be able to handle the fast internet speeds available today. When given the option, update anything on them that you can. The operating system, Wi-Fi adapter, processor speed, or memory. Always keep the network drivers, firmware, applications, and web browsers updated to the latest version available too. If your network devices have the latest technology standards and are all up to date, and you're paying for a plan with much higher than the speeds you see on the speed tests consistently, it may be time to find a new internet service provider. There you have it. You now know how to best prepare for and take speed tests. Once you have the results, if the network is showing slow speeds, you know several possible causes and steps to take to speed it up. I see a strong and healthy internet connection in your future coming soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.